For the YouTube. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Um, what a wonderful turnout for Tom's show. This is really fun. Um, I want to thank the Michigan Arts and Culture Council, which um, uh, supports our programs here at the Community Arts Center, makes it possible to have ex exhibitions like this. Um, we also get a little bit of funding from the National Endowment for the Arts. And of course, I want to thank our membership. So we, could, we wouldn't still be here 30 years um, if it wasn't for all the wonderful membership support that we get. 80% um, of our funding comes from this community. So when people say, oh, you get grants, not really. I mean, we get grants, but um, the support really comes from all of you. Um, through membership, through our fundraising events. Um, I might have been I, I misinterpreted in um, the newsletter about um, this added feature to this exhibition, that the QR codes that lead to music. And I said that the music was what inspired the art. But um, Tom is so nice, he did correct me. <laughs> and um, it led to a conversation about yeah. where does inspiration come from. So that was really, um, kind of a bonus because then we did talk about that because it's inspiration comes from many different levels often the subconscious so we uh, it's there it's are the rich title. yeah there's rich beginnings yeah. all right um when we were talking about having this exhibition um tom reminded me that early on we said oh let's pick may because we knew that his mom was gonna join us there she is oh, Rose and his sister in lockhart all the way from philippines we're happy that you could be here but we chose may because the weather wouldn't be so iffy <laughs> this is michigan this is the UP. So, um tom's language his art language is very quiet and sensitive, it's, um, but it calls us to have conversation and it calls for contemplation about what is right in the world and what is wrong. And um, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to town now to talk about oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's about all I can okay. okay. No, but um, we're very pleased and honored to have your work and we thank you for sharing your work with us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I learned to put on my glasses this time. <laughs> um, I have a few notes here I want to go through and then we can have question and answers afterwards. Uh, I'd like to start with some welcome and acknowledgement statements. Uh, I would, of course, I, uh, like to thank the Copper Country Arts Center, especially Cynthia and Bonnie. And Cynthia helped with the installation quite a bit because I was paralyzed almost two, two weeks ago. I just put the pieces out and said, what do I do now? <laughs> so I waited for her to come back from Canada and help me yesterday. Uh, 
Uh, I also like to welcome the special visitors, uh, my mom and my sister-in-law who came all the way from the Philippines. Uh, I'd like to thank all the visitors who, who made it here. Uh, um, but, and then the next item I want to do is I want to remember some of the uh, artists uh, who, who have left us, uh, unfortunately, uh, starting with Ed Gray, uh, Patricia Van Pelt, and Mary Wright. So I just like to give them uh, um, time for, for remembering them. Uh, next, I want to thank, uh, first of all, my best friend, my spouse and partner, <laughs> Faith. Uh, but I, I would always want to mention my mentors, at least the, if they're still uh, they came. Uh, Clyde, Nicola, Joyce Koskanmaki, and I would add to that list now, Ed Gray. Okay. Now, I want to short uh, this it's not long, it's just big letters. <laughs> so I want to I just mention some of the things I, I was thinking of, okay? Uh, so if you allow me to have this soapbox for, for a few minutes. Uh, our world appears to be undergoing several changes and difficult challenges. We have gone through an extended period of a serious pandemic for which some have suffered and many has passed have passed. Our society seems to be also undergoing irreversible fissures that even have friends and families tied up with extremely awkward relationships, mostly due to strong opposing political, ethical, and personal beliefs and interpretations. The state of bigotry and impatience also appears to have increased and intensified. I notice that some of my current works seem to reflect my reactions to these conditions. To temper my personal biases, I searched for a more, more sterile forum under which I hope to present and share my art. I serendipitously decided to cast this exhibit under the umbrella of Archetypes and Complexes, the title, as form formulated by doc, uh, Dr. Carl Jung. Uh, Dr. Jung has theorized that our psyche contains archetypes which are innate patterns of thought within our subconscious. Examples include the sage, the hero, the outlaw, the lover, the caregiver, and so on. He has about 12 of these. However, instead of strictly following Dr. Jung's classification and psychoanalysis, I am more intrigued by the idea, and I hope that you do too, uh, that some of my personal memories and your personal memories, behaviors, thoughts, responses are influenced by experiences that resides in a collective memory as well. That my art is a partial manifestation of collective archetypes that simply flows through my personal relationships and history. As such, I'm interested in conversations to discuss and understand others take on these archetypes as lenses to view our human conditions. I do not expect an academic or clinical view or discussion. Instead, I offer my art pieces in this exhibit as potential stimuli for conversation. I do not know what is happening, why violence has become ubiquitous. I feel that it is a sad state indeed. But I do include a few pieces that reflect love and joy. I believe these are important keys towards improving the situation. I hope humanity can move in the direction of healing, compassion, respect, and trust. Maybe we could reduce fear and the impetus towards tribalism. As a start, perhaps we should put a moratorium on, quote, canceling each other, end quote, and to start to talk greet and smile at each other. Uh, that's all my soapbox issues. <laughs> so let me move to a little bit uh, explaining that there's a, another thing we're trying to experiment here. It's the multimedia character. Uh, in the process of curating this exhibit, I decided to attach excerpts of song lyrics that might help in deepening the conversation. I chose songs that I considered having thoughts and emotions that are close to the art pieces. I know Cynthia mentioned that uh, she she had misinterpreted that uh, 
the the song inspired the art. The the act, the direct process was the reverse. But when Cynthia wrote that that uh, piece, uh, that that explanation, I didn't correct her because I thought it was appropriate for the issue of archetypes and complexes that this she might actually be partially right that, that, that deep inside my subconscious it did inspire me because when i make some of the art i, I have a studio my, uh, of my own and i work late at night and i turn on the music quite loud uh if you know the if uh, I hope I didn't disturb anybody during the <laughs> But it was late at night, so I probably didn't. Uh, so um, I chose songs that I consider having thoughts and emotions. Uh, actually, this practice, I want to mention that this practice is quite standard uh, of attaching poetry. is quite standard for Chinese painters as well as Japanese painters. If you notice some of the Sumi painting, there's a lot of uh, a calligraphy on the side those are actually poetry so it helps people understand their their state of mind while they were making something like birds or trees it's not simply birds or trees they're trying to express it's actually the state of their mind also now moving from the past to the future to further the experience we are experimenting with attaching youtube links via the qr code this allows the full songs to, to be played the way the artist uh, that I chose is uh, interpreting the songs. Uh, some are just music, some of the uh, links contain lyrics, some with more interesting videos. I just hope the links can evoke a good approximation of my intention of the various art pieces. Uh, so that's all I have, and uh, I wanna just open it up for a discussion or questions. <laughs> I was very much struck by looking at your, your stuff is really stimulating and beautiful but, you. but I get out of it is very very strong visceral feeling mm -hmm. I feel I, I used to eat something called manudo is, is that, do they have that in the Philippines? yeah so you know what it is it's a soup full of intestines. And um, it's absolutely delicious and calming. And there's a therapy associated with it that every witch doctor knows. And uh, in Mexico, at least. Oh, okay. And um, I also was thinking about cleaning animals after and, and looking at what you have to deal with in this and so what I wanted to ask you is for so many of these how what was the trigger of the image that you had did you notice this connection with our system of food processing and elimination uh, all I can say is maybe but I, I at this point maybe not I, I I love food, but first of all, I don't like to eat intestines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom loves it, but, <laughs> but look at this. It's to me that's what it brings back to me is that. So a anyway, yeah, it's that, that's it's it's, that. it's, uh, it's from. Uh, uh, I think I'm trying to dig in to whatever I. I I start with a lot of accidents. To be to be honest, I don't I don't plan anything. Uh, I play around. I doodle, even with the metals. I doodle with a wire, and then something just comes out of it. Okay, and uh, as Cynthia, I, I'll, I can explain some of this a little bit more. Like uh, I was telling Cynthia, the the, the Inquisition right there behind. Yeah. It's it's black and white, but, but it was an experiment I was doing with with a watercolor a watercolor paper and putting acrylic black acrylic paint and then using squeegee to just pull it out. Mm -hmm. And when I was pulling it out, 
the image of the woman came out. Uh, so I had to refine it until it's closer to a woman, but the, the rough parts was there. And then the, the one that extended longer seemed like a man looking down at her and, and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, judging her and, and doing, you know, almost ready to put their, uh, condemn her as a witch and, you know, burn her on the stakes or whatever. And in fact, the first uh, se uh, song that I tried to match with this is Joan of Arc okay. by Leonard Cohen. But that, that's too specific uh, because uh, what I, it would focus only on the woman. I think I want to focus on also what society is doing to the woman, not the woman as the, again, uh, putting Joan of Arc as the hero makes us forget that all the trash that the, the men were doing to, to Joan of Arc, the, the, the patriarch, you know, patriarchy. I looked at so, that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, I said I looked at that and I saw a priest with yes. a candle or her hands up like that and a hat like the hat, that too. The hat because, came out, yeah. yeah. So, those are those. So maybe it's it is the subconscious. Kind of like a Rorschach ink test. Once once I found it, but unlike the Rorschach ink test, uh, the patient doesn't get to, to change it. I get to change it. <laughs> so that's when I contribute a little bit more in extracting some of those archetypes into uh, the the, the Uvalde uh, was me experimenting with a digital art in which I, I extended it, oh, it's like rain, and then somehow that was in my mind also during that time where those 21 victims got shot. And we went immediately into this politics of gun control, or anti-gun control, it's like, wait a minute, you guys, somebody just died. Can we just at least, 21, yeah, some people died, you know. How more before that? I understand, but people immediately got into their their tri tribes. I'm and, agreeing with you. Yeah, so uh, in that sense, I, I kind of, um, I didn't plan it in that way, but something was moving me, okay? I, I don't know what to call it, so I tried maybe archetypes or something, there's something that's, that I'm, I'm not reaching. Maybe I don't have to, I don't have to maybe even understand it, but it is there, so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Oh. Oh, Tom, I have to say, I, I, I'm not um, um, so struck by, well, I am struck by, of course, everything you're saying about your, your, your beautiful poetry here. Um, but more than anything, it's your sense of color in poetry and color in music. It just, um, it, it's fascinating to me. In the past couple of years, I've gotten involved in some color myself. And I love what you're doing with color, and 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 this, and how you tie that all in with your your sense of poetry and, and your music. Well, thank you. Uh, I just want to correct. <laughs> it's not my poetry. Neither was oh, it no, <laughs> my but, music. But, yeah. Okay, so Joni Mitchell's in your poetry, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but she does, but. But it tells me I, what, what you're trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. I kind of attach to some of the lyrics, and, you know. Yeah. Um, Tom, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your choice of media, especially in these prints. There's so many dramatic differences from these extraordinary ones on paper to oh, it looks like yeah. prints on glass or metal. Yeah, I'm yeah. just really curious to learn more. Uh, okay. my, my first, uh, I'm a watercolorist at first. Uh, I learned, that's why I always mention Clyde Nicola. Uh, he taught me the most important lesson, not a watercolor, but actually that you have to wait until the paint dries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which I took on as philosophy also, not just on watercolor. Um, from there I moved to uh, Chinese brush painting because there's, uh, I, I'm attached to, I kind of, feel attracted to um, minimalism because minimalism uh, allows me to have room to change I'm, I'm not so fixed with it you know, I can want, look at it next week and find different things and it also allows for conversation other people can find something else in there uh, and then so 
that is my attempt to go back because I was doing sculpture and then I went back to the 2D as in fact telling Faith, uh, I think I need to go back to 2D. <laughs> I've been gone a little, a little longer. And then uh, part of the experiment there was actually uh, Yume was teaching me how to mount paper. And so I used that technique. But it was getting hard to mount this, this painting. And I already know I wanted an angry sky. So I used a tough broom to pound on it and it did something that I liked. <laughs> so that's a different media. This one is mostly because uh, we've been traveling a lot with, you know, go back and forth to Mayo and things like that. And the, uh, the most convenient me uh, media for me was digital. So I just brought my iPad and did it. And then there's a lot of images that started to come out and, uh, and I loved it. Uh, the main, if you want the details, the main software I used is uh, uh, ZenBrush 3, and then put it into Procreate, you know. And then I played around with colors or lack of color. <laughs> and then had it printed out. Uh, Groupon, fortunately, has a good deal on these things. <laughs> you know, so it, it made it affordable. And this is printed on what, Tom? Acrylic. This is printed on acrylic. Essentially, they print it on one sheet and then they kind of mount it to the acrylic. Oh, yeah. There's a question behind me. Yeah. Did I, uh, did sure, I thanks. Yeah. So, obviously, you were using your art as a way of catharsis to deal with emo deep seated emotions that you were experiencing and how you related to what was happening in the world around you. Possibly. As you progressed through your pieces and your art, did you go through different stages of that catharsis or different stages of emotional release? Do you, do you recall any of that? Like lifting from your body or lifting from your psyche? No, not really. I mean, it's a process, I guess. Uh, nothing dramatic. Uh, I, I learned to not read the news anymore. <laughs> uh, because I, I am now convinced that uh, whether it be New York Times or the more conservative papers, I, which I don't read, but I'm kind of pretty sure we're always focused on the negative, the, the one that would push our side to win. You know? So it it moves us away from conversation rather than to conversation, you know. So I, I don't like what's happening, uh, especially in Texas and, and Florida, And but I don't know enough and I'm not there either. So I know I need to move more, more uh, as a citizen, I need to be uh, involved, uh, but I don't want to get into a anger where I'm paralyzed by anger. Well, one of the things that strikes me about your work is that I, I think it touches people. I think it reaches people. And I think it opens conversation. I, I hope, yeah. That's yeah. that I could... <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia said I gave her a lot of details. I don't remember which one. <laughs> Tom, I know the so this one perhaps a mundane question compared to all the others, but how long do you work on a piece? How, you know, how much time and and uh, do you, do you invest in your work? Not much time when it's the final parts, the the preparation part. So I'm I'm starting to call these these pieces uh, because uh, my friend Raj visited one time. What do you call these? I said sculpture you know but then the more the more i look at it and with the visitors uh clement yeah that, that came recently we were full, we were talking about what's the difference between drawing and painting and then and then the more and more i i thought of this as actually drawing so when i was playing with the wire that became this it's doodling so the doodling and the, the wire bending didn't take much time 
The worst part is actually the polishing. <laughs> if I could get, if I could pay somebody to do the polishing, <laughs> it would be great. But then again, it's kind of like Chinese painting where you rub the ink. You know, it, it gives you to a different zone while you're doing it, uh, as opposed to buying ready-made ink and just pouring it, which I do too. But I do notice that when I rub the, the ink stick on the ink stone for Chinese painting. I do get into a zone, mm -hmm. uh, relax, you know, it calms me down, and then I'm ready to paint. So, mm -hmm. so the polishing may actually be, I should, I might regret it if I actually had somebody else do it. But that was the longest time, <laughs> not, not the pieces. Yeah. Thank you. Tom, can, can you talk a little bit about the marble fabrication? Oh, I forget his name. <laughs> So the marble, I, I would do a, a mock-up using architectural cardboard, okay? And I would balance it however I want. But then uh, I used to carve my own soapstone, and when I switched to marble, it was so tough, I can't do it with my tools. And so uh, when I was visiting my mom, we looked around and there was a marble shop, and it turns out there was also somebody who would actually do marble carving for you. So I sent my model to them, and my mom helped me with, with contacting them and, and uh, you know, the dealing with them. And I for, I, unfortunately, I forgot his name. I have his name, but it's in the phone I'm holding right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if anybody's interested. I'll put uh, it in the notes yeah. on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> So it's it's actually they, and they, he does maybe all the way to ninety five percent of it because some of the details get lost. So by the end, I, I fine tune uh, until I, I get the uh, the emotion I want. Like for example, I was explaining to somebody, I made it the 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 origin of this kiss was was a clay model. It was just me playing with clay, and it came out to be some image that I want, I like. And then I asked the sculptor to uh, scale it up. Okay. He thought I, I'm more interested in the um, in the sides uh, or the the smoothness of uh, or the flow on the sides, which is also important. But he missed the point. He didn't know it was the kiss. So the two guys were kind of like, <laughs> you know, not kissing, they were almost slobbing each other. And so I, I had to kind of really do something about it. So what I learned is not to have it forced. I should send them on scale already so that they don't have to do their scale on. But he, he helped to, to work to almost 95% of the manufacturing department. And it's it's both these pieces were uh, uh, either when we, when we from the Philippines again yeah. again exactly. is also marble again again is also marble. At that point, I was already learned that he missed the point, so I had a long description. <laughs> that. I said the guy should be looking at the child, while the child should be looking up, which is essentially our story. The parent will always has no time or any choice anymore. They're looking at the child. They can't look around. Well, the child can look to the future, look to the sky. So uh, it was also the, the motion is inspired by our little brother Lance, where I would play and I would lift him up and and I drop him down. Says again, again. <laughs> so any other question or comments? This is sort of mundane, I suppose, but I'm fascinated with the balance. How are you making this thing balance? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, when I was doodling, I would have two, two wires, actually, to, make, to get the width. And then I would masking tape it to get the, the width right. It's wires that are malleable, so I could change. And then I would test it, and then Put it and see if it would it would do it, and then I expand it, shrink it, or whatever, until it kind of works, and that's enough. And then I turn to the strip. So it's been tested first before I. And if it doesn't work too much, I also put some uh, resin there just for the final 
with but they they're probably balancing with some putty right now exactly. right yeah. but but absent it being a show they do balance on their own and you can walk i can testify you can walk around and and they stay balanced they are immaculately balanced yeah. in, in the <laughs> These are amazing. The, he has a series of these, and you have to find the only one way that they balance. And uh, so, when if it falls over, you you it forces you into this task of finding the balance. It's not like oh, I'm putting it back up. <laughs> it's once again a process. It's the house of cards. <laughs> the, the best thing about being the sculptor's wife is being able to touch the sculptures. <laughs> Gloria has a question, Tom. Um, the young man over there noticed that the red one here, it's hard to, to see if there's a bottom to it. It's cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> intentional. I was wondering, was it intentional yeah. or? Okay. Yeah. I, I've noticed that uh, you, you can create illusion by just mm -hmm. changing the shape. Uh, like some of the, uh, uh, when we were changing from the TV, the thick TV to the LCD TV, sometimes I would go to the store, oh, it's so thin, and then I said, oh, they just covered it. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm going to use that <laughs> idea. If you, if you just do it right, there's an illusion that it's kind of like not connected, mm -hmm. that it's thin. Well, the tree is the, uh, the tree points are the, uh... And it catches the light in a way, too, that's yeah. interesting. Like, it's not, you think it's above or something, but it's not I hate to do this, but I want to go back to the intestines. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that piece that's right behind you. Negotiations? Is that negotiation? No, negotiations behind you. Uh, I mean that one. Social media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I get for that is a view of innards. Yeah. And veins and tubes and, and some of them different colors and other colors and so I was fascinated by the way you use colors in that and that's sort of a, a modern view of traffic congestion or weather or social media and so um, I, I think that's a brilliant piece and what it says to me is that, you know, we got to get rid of the bad parts and concentrate on the good parts. And uh, so, and you brought them out just so that we can see it. And you use colors to show it because intestines never are that color. They're much more subtle. And, but you brought them out. Anyway. I just think it's a brilliant piece. Thank you. Yeah. But I, as I, I wanted to mention, I, 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 I will admit I need progressive. <laughs> but as I said in the previous shows that we have, uh, I don't think we have a monopoly of the truth, uh, and I believe that. So when I say when you said the bad parts, you know, I, I don't tend to want to say it, although I feel it sometimes. I, I try to uh, try to understand first before I judge whether it's good or bad. I need more data and more understanding because I'm only limited by my, my own experiences and my leanings. You know. I, I want more understanding, I guess. So I, I try to uh, minimize judgment. More, more talk than judgment. <laughs> I don't know what Bill said, what he said before. 
<laughs> reminds me of geology and what Bill says about geology. I mean, you look at rocks, strata, and so forth, yes. and it, you try to understand the past, but yes. Yes. form that yes. from your viewpoint of the present, right. and you tell stories, <laughs> we say that, and then those stories become more elaborate as the more you put into it. And kind of, in art in general, I think we grasp at our, possibly our archetypes. Yeah. And uh, um, then I think of, as an anthropologist, of people like the Incas who looked at rock and landscape and saw both in each other. And they'd use their architecture to reflect the landscape. And the landscape, especially mountains, to reflect their world and their reality in not just a physical sense, but in another sense. And it seems kind of what art does, it pulls an individual's position and looking at the art, and the artist has made something that draws you to do that and, and, and to dig deeper. And part of it's yourself, and part of it's the artist, and part of it's the world. Yeah, that's true. That's why uh, it was really lucky for me. I, I did. I still don't understand the uh, uh, But I'll take off whatever I can from it now. You know, I don't have to be an expert to, to do something with, with whatever ideas you have. So there is a connection with the past. Unfortunately, you got into trouble by connecting it to the future. So you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand him completely, but whatever I can get out of him, I'll take. <laughs> okay. Well, is that it? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you.